All right, here we go with fifth grade Excel lesson 41. We're going to look at rounding to the nearest dollar and dividing money amounts by a one digit divisor. When rounding to the nearest whole dollar, look at, to, at the first digit to the right of the decimal point. That means when I'm rounding this number here, I'm going to look at the number that's in the tenths place or right to the right side of that decimal point. In this case, it's a seven. And then it says, use the number line to round each of these dollar amounts. So here I have $2. That's a, an even dollar amount. And here I have $3, also an even dollar amount. So we're going to think about where do these money amounts right here fit onto this number line. It's right in the middle. We're going to round it up. Anything over here is going to round up to the nearest dollar of $3. Anything below $2.50 is going to round down over to here to two dollars even. So here we go with the first one, two dollars and seventy-eight cents. Two seventy-eight would be about right here because here's two seventy, here's two eighty, two seventy-five would be right about in the middle, two seventy-eight right about in there, and we can see that we're closer to three dollars here than we are to two dollars. So this rounds to three dollars. Alright, two dollars and fifty cents, as I said before, if it's right in the middle, 250, we're looking at that 5 that's to the right of the decimal point. If we don't use a number line and we're saying, hey, 5 or up, just like in all rounding, we are going to round that 2 up to a 3. So again, this rounds to $3. All right, number 3, $2.36. Here's 230, here's 240. 235 then would be right in the middle. So 236 is just after 235. But you can see that that's closer to $2.00 than it is to $3, so we're going to say this rounds to $2. All right, once you pause the video, do numbers 4 through 6, turn it back on when you're ready to see what the solutions are. All right, 2954, this is not on our number line up here, so we have to look at the number to this, that's to the right of the decimal point, the 5 there. The 5 tells us 5 or bigger, we're going to bump up the number in the 1's place. So instead of being $29, we're going to round this up to the closest dollar of $30. $14.84, again, look to the number to the right of the decimal point to round it to the closest dollar. The 8 tells us that we're going to be bumping this 4 up to a 15, and so the answer is $15. And then $15.49, the number to the right of the decimal point is a 4. That's 4 or less, which means that we leave the dollar amount alone, or we round down. And so we're going to go down from $15.49 down to $15. All right, hopefully you got that. Shouldn't be too tough for you. Now, how about dividing money? When, do a, when the dividend is a dollar amount, here's the dividend. Remember, the dividend is on the inside, and the divisor is on the outside. EN reminds me inside, even though there's no such word as inside, but that'll hopefully help you to remember that. And the divisor has uh, an O in here where you might think that there would be an E and that O reminds me of the word outside that starts with an O and the number on the outside of the division problem is your divisor. A little review there for you because I think today's lesson is pretty simple. It says when, di when the dividend is a dollar amount right here the decimal in the quotient will be, the quotient's the answer up here, right? Will be directly above where it is in the dividend. So we want to put these numbers straight up when I divide. Always do that. It's very important. For this reason, it's very important that the digits and the quotients be in the right place. Check each of your answers with multiplication. We're going to do that down here below. Check our answers by multiplying. Of course, when you're doing your guided practice and your homework, there's no need to uh, do a multiplication problem because you have the check answer right there in the corner. As long as you're using that seriously. And don't forget, we always want to be adding our check answers up. The purpose of the check answers is to, is to help us catch our own mistakes. The purpose of the check answer is not to work backwards so that you can figure out what the answers to the problems in the box are. That is going to kill you if you do that. You're going to end up being so confused, so behind in math. It's going to be very frustrating. So you need to understand each problem in the box and then add up the check answer after you've gone through the problems and understood them. A little lecture there for you on the, the meaning of check answers or the use of those check answers. All right, number seven, two into a dollar thirty-six. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring that decimal point up straight up to the top line, and let's bring the dollar sign up as well, so that I'm sure I have 
a money amount up on that quotient on the top. Now I'm going to say how many times does 2 go into 1? Just like a regular division problem, 2 goes into 1 0 times. So I'm going to combine that 1 with the 3 to make the number 13. How many times does 2 go into 13? Well, 2 times 6 is 12, and that's pretty close. So I'm going to use the number 6. I multiply, I subtract, I bring down the next number, which is a 6. And 2 going into 16 goes 8 times. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract, and you get 0. And hopefully, you'll get no remainders on your money amounts. If you ever get in a remainder, that's, you know, especially in this grade right now that you're in, uh, that's pretty much an indication that you've done the problem wrong. All right, let's go ahead and check this by using multiplication. We're going to do 68 cents times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Two spots in the problem over here that are on the right side of the decimal point. So we need to have two spots on the right side of the decimal point in our answer as well. And I put a dollar sign with that, $1.36, which matches up with this. So I can feel reasonably comfortable that my answer of 68 cents is correct. All right, go ahead and pause the video, do number eight right now, then turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. All right, once again, don't forget decimal point, dollar sign, straight up to the top. We never mix a decimal point with a cent sign, don't forget that. Always decimal point with a dollar sign. They both start with D. Three goes into eight, how many times? Two, three times two is six. Eight minus six is two, bring down the four. Next, I'm dividing 24 by three, which is eight. Eight times three is 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. Bring down the 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Let's see if this answer is correct by multiplying. You should have already done this. 283 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. That's 6 plus 2 is 8. Decimal point, dollar sign, $8.49. All right, here are two more problems for you to try. Pause the video, do numbers 9 and 10, and then turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. All right, number 9, 4. Oh, first of all, let's get that decimal point, the dollar sign up there. 4 going into 1 does not go into 1. So we combine the 1 with the 6 to make 16. 4 goes into 16 four times. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. And then we bring down the 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. And we have no remainder. Then I check it by doing 41 cents times 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Decimal point goes over two spots. All right, number 7, you should have already done this one. Decimal point, dollar sign. 8 divided by 7 is 1. That's 7. 8 minus 7 is 1. Bring down the 5. And we combine these together. The 1 and the 5 makes 15. 15 divided by 7 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract and get 1 and bring down my 4. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract and get no remainder. $1.22 times 7. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15. Carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 7 plus 1 is 8. $8.54 matches up and I can feel good about my answer. All right, thanks for watching.